There are applications where you want to formulate constraints that make sure that a certain percentage is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, a certain threshold. To illustrate such a situation, let's have a look at our furniture production problem again, where tables, chairs and lounges can be produced. Suppose now that we want to extend our model and add a constraint that makes sure that at most 20% of the furniture pieces are tables. Recall that x1 represents the number of tables. How can we formulate such a constraint? As always, give yourself a try and pause the video now. To calculate what percentage of the furniture pieces are tables, we simply have to divide the number of tables by the total number of furniture pieces. In our exercise, this percentage must be less than or equal to 20%. This constraint is perfectly fine and would do the job. But sometimes the purpose of a model is not only to precisely describe a problem, but to be used to solve the problem with commercial software packages, for instance. Without going into any detail on how solution methods work, Let's simply take it for granted that linear models often outperform nonlinear models when it comes to solving them. Hence, many authors prefer to formulate linear models if possible. How is the situation in our case? Well, the new constraint is not linear. Our challenge is to give an equivalent formulation of the constraint that is linear. We can derive such a formulation as follows. First, we multiply both sides of the constraint with the left-hand side's denominator. Watch out, we have here an inequality and, as we know from a previous video, multiplying inequalities with negative numbers would change the direction of the inequality. Therefore, it is important to check at this point whether or not the denominator we have just multiplied with can be negative. Since all x's have a non-negative domain, the sum of the x's is non-negative and we don't need to worry here. The constraint that has evolved is linear and we would be done. But of course, we can simplify the right hand side a bit if we wanted to. And shift all axes to the left hand side. Finally, we can simplify the left-hand side a bit. This is a very compact, linear constraint that makes sure that at most 20% of the furniture pieces are tables. Just to get used to it, Let's do another exercise. Can you formulate a linear constraint that makes sure that the revenue gained by chairs and lounges is at least 60% of the total revenue? I recommend to pause the video now. Let's see. 10 times x2 plus 9 times x3 is the revenue gained by chairs and lounges. If we divide this by the total revenue, we get the revenue from chairs and lounges in percentages.
that value should be at least 60%, which gives us the following. This constraint is nonlinear, so we are not ready yet. Doing basically the same transformations as in the first example, we get our final result. This is a linear constraint.